That's right. Thanks to American Green Lights, I have some really nice, high quality lights up in the shop. It's great. i uh, really enjoying being down here. Now, when I told Jim Uno from American Green Lights that I needed a lighting solution for a shop with fairly low ceilings, he recommended these LED retrofit kits that are made to go inside of a fluorescent housing, uh, but as long as you deal with the drivers appropriately, since these are low voltage, they can just be mounted right to the beams uh, and hardly add any profile at all, maybe half an inch. Uh, so it's a really great solution for this shop and probably for a lot of shops out there. Uh, so I think it's an interesting project seeing how the drivers are stored and, and how this all came together. So I hope you enjoy it. So to kick the project off, Jim actually took my SketchUp model of the shop and used his program to put the lights in and see how much uh, light power, candle power there was at every point in the shop. So that's a really nice service they offer to make sure you get just what you need and don't spend any more uh, than you need to get the lighting where you need it. And like I said, these are retrofit kits, but if you put the drivers in a code compliant metal box, then they can just be used without any kind of fixture. So that's what I'm setting up for right now. I bought one 24 inch by 24 inch box, and that can house the 30 drivers that power all the lights for the shop. So while I'm drilling these holes out, it's a good time to inform everyone that I am not in any way a licensed or really competent electrician. I'm doing my best with some advice and I am pulling permits and following codes, uh, but just be careful with anything you see me doing. Um, so that being said, I wire the drivers together in groups of three and screw them into the housing. Now, unfortunately, you're watching me kind of screw this up because these drivers are not supposed to be mounted uh, within an inch of each other because they give off heat that needs to dissipate. Um, and clearly, I've got them a lot closer than an inch. And I really did not want to buy another one of these cabinets. As you'll see, this one's pretty full. So I had to kind of get creative to get all of them in and not space within an inch. Uh, so what I did is took out every other one drilled out the holes and put in little threaded rods, threaded bolts that would allow half of the drivers to be mounted a couple inches above so that they're uh, further apart than an inch from, from the nearest drivers mounted to the back of the box. So this was a pretty tedious process, um, not really the most engaging thing, but it worked and it saved me another one of these boxes and they're kind of expensive. I use a little bit of Loctite on the bolts just to hold everything in place. Once these are bolted in place, really pretty solid, and they're not going anywhere. So I just need to do what I did to this one 15 more times. Actually, I think I got away with, I don't know, 16 more times. So it took a while, but in the end, it worked out pretty good. And there's all 30 of the drivers in the one box. So now I just need to connect all the wires so that they all, all 30 of them come together and are powered just by one set of wires coming into the box. And now I need to drill a hole inside so that I can get power in. This was a pretty hefty carbide tipped bit. It uh, still took a while to cut through this this steel that was oh, probably about 3.30 seconds. It was pretty thick. So I just took it slow, used the high torque setting on the drill, and lots of oil and it worked out. Oops. 
So now all the wires can be combined with wire nuts so that they're all powered off that one line coming into the box. I always thought it was best to use electrical tape with wire nuts, but I have it on good authority that that's actually not a good thing to do. I can't exactly remember why. Any electricians feel the need to comment? Hopefully you're not going to tell me that I need to go back and take all these out. Um, but I don't think that's the case. And of course, I attached a ground wire to the electrical box itself and made sure that it had good contact with the metal surface. It seemed like a thing to do. Unlike the person that put in the stove at my old house. Ouch. Okay, so now I can cut lengths of doorbell wire to power the lights. And I label them all just because if there's any problem, I wanted to make it easy to trace a light to a driver. That didn't end up being the case, but I wanted to make sure that I was covered. Now these lights are really low profile, less than half an inch, uh, which is good because my shop ceiling's not real high, and when I do the soundproofing, it's gonna drop it down even a little bit more. Um, so I really didn't want any more profile in the lights than, than I needed. So look at that, just very inconspicuous really good solution if, if you have a low ceiling and you don't want to have a, a head knocker or something that can break. Um, definitely once once the high voltage side of things is taken care of, these lights are really, really easy to get wired in. That's definitely an advantage. So from here, it's just a whole lot of connecting the doorbell wire to the lights and, and then to the power source. Um, I used wire knots just because I'll probably be taking this apart when to, to do the, the for real ceiling. Um, when I do this for real, I'll use the heat shrink wrap stuff and, and solder, uh, but for now, I just use a bunch of wire nuts. And it was really fun seeing each new set of lights come on as I got them powered up. And here is the box hung in place in an area of the shop that will remain just kind of unfinished and walled off. And you can see that 110 power cord coming in, cable coming in, is the only high voltage portion of this project. Everything else is low voltage. So there's the shop all lit up. It looks great. The video is coming out great. And that's because these LEDs emit a full spectrum of light, unlike fluorescents that only hit a few peaks. Uh, and that's not good for the camera, which might pick up only selective peaks, fluorescent might be missing it, and it's also good for somebody just working in the shop because this is very close to natural light, which is the ideal for your eyes and the best for working conditions and so on. So I think I'm really going to be happy with these. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the little guy's happy about it. Bye, everyone.